there are a number of important neurological reflexes related to swallowing that originate primarily in the brain stem. Uh, these include uh, swallowing type preparatory activities like salivation, chewing, rooting, and sucking reflexes that are found in infants, uvular and tongue reflexes that are uh, automatic muscular responses in the oral cavity, important protective reflexes like gagging, vomiting, and coughing, and then our respiratory reflex which makes sure our blood contains adequate oxygen. Our saliva comes primarily from three glands, the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland. Secondarily, we get saliva from a variety of accessory glands throughout the oral cavity. These glands are activated by the stimulation of taste. The seventh facial nerve primarily innervates the sublingual and submandibular glands. The ninth glossopharyngeal nerve uh, activates the parotid gland. And these activations come from salivatory nuclei held within the pons in the brainstem. The sublingual gland is just behind the ramus of the mandible under the sublingual fold at the base of the oral cavity. The submandibular gland is located posterior to the mylohyoid muscle within the tongue root. Saliva from the sublingual and the submandibular glands is used to form the bolus and help lubricate for the oral stage of the swallow. The parotid glands are our largest salivatory glands. They're located posterior to the ramus of the mandible, behind the auditory meatus, which is the um, opening for the auditory system on the temporal bone. The parotid glands empty into the pharynx and provide lubrication for the bolus during the pharyngeal and esophageal stages of the swallow. The chewing, rooting, and sucking reflexes are reflexes that are controlled within the midbrain that are mediated by the fifth trigeminal nerve. These are used uh, in our field with uh, prematurely born infants to uh, help them develop their um, uh, chewing reflexes uh, so that they can eventually get a normal type swallow. You can stimulate uh, the chewing reflex by putting pressure on the roof of the mouth. Rooting and sucking reflexes, reflexes that turn to orient um, toward something and to suck on it, are stimulated by pressure uh, in the paraoral region around the lips. Uvular and tongue reflexes are automatic muscular responses. You can stimulate elevation of the uvula um, by touching it. Uh, this involves the ninth glossopharyngeal nerve, um, sending a sensory signal, uh, and then the 10th vagus and 11th accessory nerves contract the levator veli palatini. Tongue retraction or elevation can be stimulated by putting force on the tongue in the opposite direction. So if you pull on the tongue, it'll automatically try to pull back. If you push down on the tongue, it'll automatically apply force up. Um, these are mediated by the ninth glossopharyngeal nerve for the action of the palatoglossus to help pull the tongue up, and the twelfth hypoglossal nerve uh, for action of the genioglossus uh, to press against pressure. These, ref these reflexes get used in our field to help exercise some of the muscles involved in swallowing. If you have a case of anatomical underdevelopment or some sort of neurological paresis resulting in muscle weakness, these can be used on both adults and children but this type of therapy you have to be fairly cautious with because um, areas you might be prodding to respond uh, for uvular and tongue reflexes are fairly close to areas that um, would uh, potentially cause someone to gag. The gagging reflex is triggered by touching the fascial pillars, the posterior part of the tongue, the posterior pharyngeal wall, the uvula, uh, this reflex is mediated by the ninth glossopharyngeal nerve, sending, sending sensory information down to the medulla, and that causes activation of motor neurons of the vagus nerve uh, to create that gagging type contraction. Gagging results in contraction of abdominal muscles, uh, muscles that elevate the palate, and your pharyngeal elevators and constrictors. This reflex can be a challenge when doing things like a rigid endoscopy where you put a, a small camera on the end of a stick uh, into the mouth to try to observe laryngeal function. 
Notice also that there's overlap with the ninth glossopharyngeal nerve providing sensory information uh, with our sense of bitter tastes. So uh, a particularly strong bitter taste may cause gagging, and this is potentially a survival-related reflex where your body doesn't want you to um, eat something that's too acidic or too uh, alkaline as it may be bad for your system. The vomiting reflex is basically taking the gagging reflex to the extreme. Um, the vomiting reflex originates from the medulla as well, uh, closely uh, associated with your swallowing areas. Vomiting can be triggered by unpleasant cell smells, unpleasant tastes, problems with your uh, gastrointestinal system, uh, or vestibular dysfunction by problems with your uh, balance system. In addition to some of the muscular actions for gagging, vomiting is also going to induce uh, salivation to help lubricate that pathway, um, vocal fold adduction and lowering the epiglottis to help um, protect the larynx from the uh, stuff that you're vomiting, um, elevating the larynx, um, which again is uh, helps keep the larynx out of the food pathway and make the channel around the larynx rather than over the top of it. Elevation of the velum to close off the uh, nasal port. Um, elevation of the pharynx to shorten the distance between um, the esophagus and the uh, outside world um, uh, for the vomiting action. Uh, the jaw is lowered and the tongue is usually protruded again to open up that pathway. The esophageal sphincters are opened up so that the contents of the stomach can be expelled and the abdominal muscles are contracted to um, uh, push against the stomach and, and uh, empty the contents of the stomach. The coughing reflex involves adducting the larynx using expiratory muscles to build subglottal air pressure uh, between the larynx which then gets explosively released. This is done in order to try to clear irritation from the airway. This involves uh, both sensory and motor components of the vagus nerve within the medulla. Generally speaking, coughing actually isn't very good for your larynx despite it being a protective function. So if you do need to cough, you should try to cough as gently as possible. If there's something uh, kind of irritating your airway and you think you want to cough, um, a, a healthier solution is to get some water and uh, take in a good sized uh, mouthful of water and try to swallow that forcefully. And that may wash whatever's irritating your your airway um, out of the airway and down into the stomach. The respiratory reflex has uh, two centers that control it, one for inspiration and one for expiration that are located in the medulla, the lowest part of the brainstem. This reflex is mediated by the ninth glossopharyngeal nerve. This overlap with some of our other reflexes also helps coordinate respiration with swallowing. Uh, while you're chewing, it's okay to breathe, but when you go to the actual swallow, uh, you want to avoid having any respiration take place because that food pathway crosses over the air pathway uh, in adult human anatomy. The respiration reflex can also be triggered by chemoreceptors uh, inside the body that keep track of how much oxygen and carbon dioxide and blood acidity you have. Um, to make sure that you're getting enough oxygen for life purposes. So respiration is one of these kind of tricky gray areas where um, there is an autonomic control of it that will eventually take over. If you're not getting enough air, your body will start breathing forcefully, um, but we do have a limited ability to stop respiration from happening, either consciously holding our breath or to interrupt it during something like swallowing.